When you want to get an engineering job in tech, you can go through the software route, the hardware route, or the PM product manager route. For software, there's just so much great content about it online, so I'm not going to talk about it. For PM, that needs a whole video on its own, so maybe I'll do something about it later. But in this video, I'll be focusing on the hardware route. You could be interested in consumer electronic companies like Apple, Meta, or Google. You could also be interested in EV companies like Tesla, Rivian, or Lucid. Or you could be interested in autonomous vehicle or AV companies like Neuro, Zooks, or Waymo. Regardless, they more or less ask the exact same questions in their interviews and cover the same topics. Topics like material science, statics, dynamics, manufacturing, heat transfer, waterproofing, tolerance analysis. I mean, it's a long list, but I'd say those are like the main seven. Anyways, I'm going to go through a case study from an actual technical interview that I did a while ago. I won't just share the questions, but I'll also share the solutions that I came up with for that interview. And FYI, the solutions are 100% correct because I had a senior staff engineer from one of those tech companies look over it and tell me it was good. Looking at this case we're presented with this diagram we have a camera attached to a cantilevered beam that is mounted on top of a car now based on this diagram we have to answer these four sub questions one how would you design a structure that would minimize the camera's exposure to vibration two how would you ensure the camera doesn't overheat three how would you protect the camera from environmental conditions and four how would you ensure that the camera can be installed accurately and assembled repeatedly in the same location across multiple vehicles. So that's the problem we're trying to solve. I recommend pausing the video, trying to solve it by yourself, and then continuing to watch the video to see the solution. Anyways, let's start with question number one. How would you design a structure that would minimize the camera's exposure to vibrations? There are six things that can be done to minimize camera vibrations. First, let's consider structural damping. Simply, all it means is incorporate a rubber damping layer between the camera and the beam. This will help absorb vibrational energy so energy doesn't get transferred from the vehicle to the camera. Second, let's consider material selection. Using materials with damping properties like composite materials that can be used in cantilever beam will help absorb vibrations. Materials with higher stiffness to weight ratio is ideal here. Examples include 7075 aluminum or custom carbon fiber. Third, we have a beam and obviously we want to reduce this cantilever beam's deflection. Well, how do we do that? First, we can reduce the length or we can reduce the applied force. We can also increase the moment of inertia or material stiffness because that will reduce the beam deflection. Hence, lowering the overall vibration. Now, why does reducing beam deflection end up reducing vibration? Well, less bending means you have less energy stored in a beam and released as oscillations. Let me find an example. A ruler would be perfect here. I found a ruler. Okay, so if you can look at it from right here and it's just like, see how like, because it's so easily bendable, it can oscillate back and forth and that's an unstable structure. Anyways, the fourth thing we can do to minimize the camera's exposure to vibration is increase the natural frequency of the beam. The equation that governs natural frequency is Fn equals the square root of K over M, where K is stiffness and M is mass. So designing the cantilever beam out of a stiffer material or minimizing its mass will allow it to have a higher natural frequency. Now, why would we even want a higher natural frequency? I'll tell you, you ever heard heard of resonance basically if you have a system oscillating at a certain frequency then you add an external force that matches the frequency of the system that is going to lead to excessive motion that can sometimes be completely unpredictable now that was an awfully technical explanation let me try to simplify it you know when you're a kid and you're swinging on the swing in the playground and when you move your feet at the right time you end up going faster and faster and faster that's because you're adding energy in perfect rhythm now imagine Imagine someone pushes you at the wrong time, it won't help you go faster and faster. If anything, it'll actually slow you down. So resonance is when like more energy is added into the system at just the right time to keep the system going higher and higher, moving faster and faster and faster. And we don't want that in a stable structure. Vibration and oscillation is never something we want with something that is meant to be stable, like a building or a camera mount. Fifth, I know previously we've talked about incorporating rubber damping between the camera and the beam, but we can also incorporate rubber damping between the beam 
in the vehicle that will help absorb any external road vibrations. That's basically the solution for question one. Moving on to question two, how would you ensure the camera doesn't overheat? Well, there are seven things that we can do to make sure the camera doesn't overheat. First, we can start off with passive cooling. Now, how do we do passive cooling? Well, we can do one of three things. First, we can attach a heat sink to the camera housing what a heat sink does it, it expands the surface area of the housing or the enclosure and a greater surface area allows for more heat to get out of the system second we can take advantage of thermal conduction so when we use a camera enclosure that has a higher thermal conductivity than the actual camera itself so that means using a thermal enclosure made out of copper or aluminum so if we have this enclosure that has a greater thermal conductivity he will dissipate away from the camera out through the enclosure third we got to implement some kind of ventilation so if you design the camera mount with openings in mind then we can have natural airflow flow across the camera to cool it down so when it comes to passive cooling again adding heat sinks expands the surface area allows heat to dissipate out of the camera using an enclosure material that has a higher thermal conductivity than the camera also allows the heat to dissipate away from the camera and then finally external ventilation that one's kind of obvious you've definitely seen it yourself if you're sitting down you're hot and a nice breeze comes in you cool down a little bit second we can implement active cooling to prevent the camera from overheating and there's a couple ways that we can do that first we can implement fans a small and quiet fan blowing air across the camera will help prevent it from overheating second we can use something called a peltier device which thermoelectrically helps remove heat from electronics third way we can prevent the camera from overheating is implementing some form of sun protection just like the sun can get you to feel really hot same thing goes with cameras and electronic equipments long exposure to the sun will obviously get this stuff to overheat i'm sure you've seen it when it's a nice hot sunny day and you leave your phone out while you're biking or doing whatever your phone overheats so anyways for this particular example for this camera enclosure if you use reflective coatings that will help reduce the likelihood that this camera overheats so things like aluminum coatings white paint silver coated or gold coated films can protect the camera from overheating fourth we talked about external conditions that can cause the camera to overheat but there's also internal conditions that can make the camera overheat so that usually comes from interior electronic components so for example placing the camera near a battery or near a motor that often have high temperatures can make the camera overheat so implementing insulating material between these hot electrical components and the camera can prevent the camera from overheating as well some common examples of insulating material are things like aerogel or polyurethane foam these are a couple good options that are commonly used in electrical components sixth we gotta have efficient thermal management one thing we can do is apply thermal paste between the camera and the heatsink the benefit of thermal paste is it allows for heat to dissipate much more smoothly next you can also implement thermal sensors nothing wrong with implementing some kind of sensor that can monitor the temperature of the camera over time if the temperature exceeds a certain limit we can activate a fan to cool it down as fast as possible and seventh when we are developing a product there are a few considerations that we can consider during the design phase and the prototyping phase to make sure we can avoid overheating completely now in the prototyping phase it's important to simulate the condition that the camera will actually be in when and it's being used in the real world one thing we can do is something called accelerated life cycle testing for example aging through a process called heat soaking in a chamber if you're unaware heat soaking is when you take some kind of product or material and place it in a chamber expose it to very very high heat now you do that for a certain amount of time and what that does is it simulates the process of wear and tear over the years obviously you don't have time to wait 50 years and see how your camera forms over time so instead you place it in this heat chamber and get the experience 50 years of wear and tear in much 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 less amount of time so this is everything we talked about so far summarized in this diagram we have your camera in orange you have the thermal paste in green we have in gray the electronic enclosure 
what you see at the top right here these are heat sinks and again that allows for heat to dissipate away from the camera we have the thermal paste in green that allows heat to easily transfer from the camera to the enclosure in blue we have the peltier device that essentially removes heat thermoelectrically and at the very very top we have a fan that blows air to cool down the system even more moving on to the third question how would you protect the camera from environmental conditions first thing build a waterproof enclosure this is gonna be placed on top of a car and it rains it snows like we don't want the camera to fail to the water so implementing things like o-rings and gaskets inside your camera enclosure will prevent water from entering through the enclosure into your camera the second environmental condition to keep in mind is corrosion resistance right you don't want your parts or your camera or your beam or anything to corrode or rust so whatever metal part you choose to use anodizing it could be a great option when you anodize materials like aluminum you create this thick protective oxide layer which prevents the material from corroding or changing color this is very important with environments that have high humidity or are exposed to road salts like for when it's snowing moving on to the fourth and final question of this case study how would you ensure the camera can be installed accurately and assembled repeatedly in the same location across multiple vehicles now obviously whenever you're building something in engineering you don't just build it for one vehicle or you don't just build it for one product you're usually building it for multiple if it's a startup maybe tens or hundreds if it's a larger company then you're looking at millions or tens of millions or maybe hundreds of millions now the first thing to consider is you need to implement certain design features now your design needs to implement some kind of poke yoke features now what does that mean it refers to designing parts in a way that doesn't allow for errors to occur so looking at this diagram on the left you see there's two possible ways to assemble it because you can rotate the part and you can assemble it with the right peg on the left side and the left peg on the right side but if you look at the diagram on the right you'll see that because both pegs are different sizes there's only one way for it to go in another thing you can do is implement alignment features incorporating dowels keyways pins or notches on the camera mount and the vehicle mounting points will go a long way here for example if you have a dowel on one part and then an opening or a hole on the other then they'll fit seamlessly together and if you want to even speed up installation and this is something commonly used in cars you want to have snap fits so these parts can just snap on and off or have some kind of quick release mechanism second thing to keep in mind to make sure that this part again can be assembled accurately all the time on a manufacturing line is you want to implement engineering drawings obviously and have gdnt be an important part of these engineering drawings gdnt just involves the use of engineering symbols on your drawings to explain things like how flat a part should be or how circular a certain dowel should be and give a little bit more information on the dimensions used in your drawings super important to make sure every part that's manufactured comes out looking the same third thing you want to keep in mind is incoming quality control so you want to make sure that you are inspecting the quality of parts to ensure that they actually come out how they're supposed to look like for if you want to create sops which stands for standard operating procedures and this is in a way some kind of instruction manual that operators any manufacturing line will follow to assemble your parts fifth thing to consider is outgoing quality control we can use alignment lasers or measurement tools to validate the camera's position but that's it we just looked at a case study that was asked to me in a real life technical interview and we looked at how to answer this case study we had a simple camera mounted on a beam which was attached to a vehicle it is obviously a simplified diagram of what it is in real life but regardless engineering is all about oversimplification of the things we see in the real world and doing some math on it and doing some analysis on it to design something that could actually work in the real world so we were asked questions about vibration heat transfer environmental conditions and design for assembly now i hope this video didn't overwhelm you because that was not the intention the intention was to show you what these technical interviews in these big tech companies is like so you're better prepared when your time comes that way whether your end goal is waymo tesla or google you're good to go anyways i hope this video brought you value i'll see you in the next one peace Thank you.